Hey guys, welcome to Coding with Hanya. In this video, we'll explore the crucial steps of executing a Java program. Many people see computers as mysterious magic boxes conjuring up software and applications out of thin air. But little do they know, behind the magic lies a complex process of turning code into functioning software. The intricate inner workings of compiling and running code is often overlooked, yet it's crucial for all coders to understand it. So before we get started, let's understand the basic meaning of compiling and running. Compiling and running refers to the process of transforming human-readable code into machine-readable code and executing it to produce the desired results. It's basically the process that happens when you press the run button in your IDE. The run button performs two actions. The first action is compiling your code. The second action is running your code. Compiling refers to the process of transforming human-readable code into machine-readable code, also known as bytecode. Running is where the Java Virtual Machine, JVM, takes the compiled code and executes it to produce the desired output. You can think of compiling as translating a language. Let's demonstrate this using a simple scenario. Let's say you travel to France. And you go to a bakery, as people do when they go to France. The baker greets you in French saying, Bonjour. Only problem is that you don't speak a lick of French. You hope the baker speaks English and asks, Can I have a croissant? But unfortunately for you, the baker doesn't speak any English. You guys are at a standstill because neither of you can understand each other. You tell the baker you don't understand any French, and the baker tells you, Je comprends pas l'anglais. And because of this, the order cannot be completed. To solve this issue, we can use a translator, which serves a similar purpose to a compiler in converting a message or code from one form into another that is understandable and can be acted upon. Using a translator, our bonjour is translated to hello. We place our order saying hello, one croissant please, which gets translated to bonjour, un croissant s'il vous plaît. Because your order can be understood by the baker, the baker completes your order, and you get your delicious, freshly baked croissant. Now, the same idea can be applied to running code. In this case, our two communicators are not a French baker and an American tourist who only speaks English, but a source code and JVM. Our translator is the Java C compiler. The first communicator is our source code, which is a set of instructions written in a programming language. In this case, it's Java. The source code is the .java file that contains all the code that we've written. Our second communicator is the JVM, which is an abstract machine that enables a computer to run a Java program. JVM understands Java bytecode, and it communicates with the compiler and the local machine. It does not, however, understand source code, which means it cannot directly communicate with humans. Our Java C compiler is our translator as it understands source code and Java bytecode. It converts our high-level source code into machine code, making it possible for the computer to execute the code and produce the desired output. It also checks the source code for syntax errors and other issues such as missing semicolons or unmatched brackets, and it generates messages if it finds any issues. Now let's see these components communicate. So our source code is basically asking in Java to have Hello World printed. It tries to do this by talking to JVM directly. But JVM can't do anything directly because it doesn't understand the source code. The source code has to use the compiler to translate its commands to Java bytecode. But the compiler complains, finding a mistake in the Java syntax, 
Look closely and see if you can tell what's wrong with our syntax. You guessed it, it's a missing semicolon. The compiler alerts us that we're missing a semicolon and cannot compile until that's fixed. We fix a source code error by adding a semicolon and recompile. The compiler takes the source code file as input and generates a corresponding class file that contains the compiled bytecode, changing the file extension from .java to .class. The bytecode is understood by JVM and can now be executed. JVM executes your code by interpreting the bytecode while the underlying machine performs a computation based on the executed code which is written in machine code. Machine code is a set of instructions that can be understood by the computer's processor. Since JVM can be installed in any platform, it's able to run your code everywhere, meaning it can communicate with any machine, making it very powerful. This is why Java is renowned for its write once, run anywhere capability. And there you have it. Hello World is printed out after the compilation and running process. Let's recap our compiling and running process. Step one, writing the source code. This step involves writing the code in a high level programming language like Java using an IDE or text editor. The source code should be written in a way that is understood by the compiler. Step 2. Compiling the source code. In this step, the source code is passed through a compiler which translates a high-level language into bytecode, which is a low-level machine-readable format. The bytecode file is saved with the .class extension. Step 3. Running the code within the JVM. The JVM interprets the bytecode and executes instructions it contains. And finally, when the code is executed, it performs the desired tasks, in this case printing output to the console. Now that we understand what goes into the process of compiling and running our code, let's learn how to compile and run in the command line. We have our handy dandy run button. Why should we bother to learn how to compile on the command line? The first reason is efficient development. Knowing the commands for compiling and running code can help save you time and effort during development. You won't need to rely on your IDE to compile and run your code, which is useful when you're working on a remote machine or with limited access to an IDE. The second reason is getting a good understanding of the Java ecosystem. Compiling and running are basic components of the Java development process. Understanding these concepts gives you a better understanding of how the Java ecosystem works and how your code is transformed in a runnable program. Okay, let's start by compiling and running this main.java file. The compiling command is very simple. You start by writing Java C, which stands for Java Compile, followed by your program name and its .java extension. Note that compiling commands are case sensitive. Make sure your file names and commands are written in the correct case. Now let's give it a try on the terminal. Depending on your IDE, you'll see a cursor appear under your command. That means your code was free of syntax errors and successfully compiled. Once our code is compiled, our next step is to run it. All you have to do is write Java, followed by the program name, making sure to drop the .java extension from the file. Let's go ahead and run our code on the terminal. And there you have it, our source code successfully executed with the output hello world. You are now ready to compile and run your code using the command line. Thank you so much for watching and if you like this video and would like to see more, please like and subscribe.